So a few weeks back, um, it's just a little funny story. Um, I was, uh, it was a Sunday and uh, Pastor Phil, I was working on a four-wheeler and Pastor, Pastor Phil had texted me, hey, what are you doing? Now I had, um, I had kind of had a heads up on this and that he was going to ask me and I thought that way anyways. And, uh, so I'm working on this four-wheeler and I look over, I'm like, oh man, he's going to ask me to speak. I know, <laughs> I know he's going to ask me to speak. So uh, I had oil and gas all over my hands and I'm uh, thinking in my mind, like, you know, I could probably come up with a few excuses where I can just say, not this time, not this time. I haven't spoken in, in public places like this probably four years, and, and I'm like, well, you know, we'll just, I'll just figure something out. And I didn't even tell him this part, so. Uh, but I went, and I, I just left it be, and I, I, I've continued working, and uh, I got the four-wheeler started, and hadn't been started in a while, and, it caught on fire. And uh, I had an eight foot flame in my driveway. And uh, the long story short, God will get your attention. Just, let, let's put that out there, right? God uses different things to get your attention. You know, in the, in the Bible times, there were shepherds that had slings, and sometimes they had to fling a rock over into the bushes to scare the sheep out of the, the briars. Sometimes they used a hook, and sometimes they used other things. But, you know, I feel like God was like, hey, psh- here you go. Here you go. Wake up. It's, it's your turn. It's your turn. So this morning I want to talk to you about hearing the voice of God and recognizing the voice of God and how important it is at a time where this world has gone crazy, has gone, it's lost its way and its ability to comprehend anything about God. You know, uh, I believe God talks to us and God speaks to us and God uses the, through the Holy Spirit and presses things on our heart. But how often do we take time to listen? That's, a, that's an important part of a conversation. If your spouse or one of your friends never listened to what you said, how, what kind of relationship would you have? Now listen, I'm not talking about the crazy aunt or uncle that's always following hunches and, and stuff like that. I'm talking about communion with God. Spending time with God. When Jesus was ready to ascend to heaven, he told the disciples to go and wait for the power of the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the teacher, and the guide. The Holy Spirit, that same Holy Spirit, is leading us today and wants to guide each and every one of us that have a relationship with Jesus. But how often are we paying attention? How often do we yield to the Spirit? What you saw up here wasn't rehearsed. What you saw the last 10 minutes of worship, that wasn't rehearsed. That's not something we're trying to drum up. That's the leading of the Holy Spirit. Just unadulterated praise. It doesn't matter how messy it gets. But it's leading of the Spirit. And it's willing vessels to follow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father. God, I thank you for the opportunity to share your word. I ask that you speak through me, and I ask that you help me to deliver this message. God, help us to remember that we're nothing without you, but we can do everything with you. In Jesus' name, amen. So there are many things that speak to us every day. Everybody agree? At work, at home when you're watching social media, when you're watching TV, driving in the car, the news anchor, the social media influencer. I was reading some statistics in a report that said that uh, the global marketing budget for influencers, everybody know what an influencer is? It's these people that get on social media and blab about products. And their job is to get you hooked. But the global budget for influencers, for retailers and merchants, is $21 billion for 2023. $21 billion they're paying to get somebody to get on there and talk about their product. Somebody is always has a, an opinion. Everyone has something to say. In this hectic time, we, we need to be able to hear and distinguish the voice of God more than ever. Jesus said in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them 
and they follow me. Then in verse 5, he says, a stranger they will not follow. Jesus referred to his followers as sheep. He referred to us as sheep. Um, there's a reason for that. In the first century, a single sheep pen could hold multiple flocks. So it was essential for the sheep to know and recognize their own shepherd's voice. There had to be an unmistakable familiarity between the two in order for the sheep to follow and to feel safe. <clears throat> the sheep and that shepherd had to have some history. In our life, we have to have history with our good shepherd. If we don't have intimacy with the good shepherd, we have nothing. Sheep absolutely need a shepherd. They need to be carefully guided through every part of our life. Christ is our good shepherd. John 10, 15 said he lays his, his life down for a sheep. Jesus laid his life down for us. Nobody took it. Nobody killed him. He laid his life down. He gave his life for you and me, the most wretched of sinners. He gave his life for us. We as a human race are born into sin and unable to save ourselves. Without Jesus, we're doomed to eternal separation from God. Romans 3, 23 and 24 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. That's the second half of the story. The first half is we've messed up. Anybody in here can, can realize that. I've messed up bad in my life over and over with my, eh, with my parents, with my wife, with my kids, with God. But there's forgiveness. There's a plan and there's a way. We've all missed the mark <laughs> plenty of times. I remember living in Michigan. I grew up in Michigan near Detroit. And uh, my in-laws lived out in the country, about a half hour from where we lived. And uh, this farmer had some sheep. And uh, I used to watch these sheep, and they just stayed there. They had a whole area to, to, to walk and graze and stuff, and they just stayed there. But this farmer didn't spend any time with them. He didn't, he didn't take them out, put them out to the pasture or anything. He just left them there with a, a big bale of hay. And pretty soon... They were, they were in horrible shape. And I just watched them, and I thought, man, those are nasty-looking sheep. They had, he put a big bale of hay, a big round bale out there, and uh, they were just, they stood, they stood by it, and, ate it, and then they started climbing on top of it, and then rain and snow and weather and ice, and no matter what was going on, they were there. They just stayed there. There was a barn. They didn't go into the barn. They just stayed there, and I thought, well, that's a mess. I don't even want to, it was pretty, pretty gross, but... That's how we are as, as sheep, as God's sheep. We, we, if we don't have a shepherd, before we come to Christ, we're just, we just exist. We have no purpose. We have no, um, nothing to go on. Without Jesus, we're nothing. But God in his mercy has made a way of escaping sin. But we have to follow the shepherd's voice. It's not just a one time, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me of my sins, and that's it. We walk away and we don't change. We have to change. And the way we change is by following the voice of the shepherd, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and following and reading God's word. There's no other way to heaven other than Jesus Christ. No other name on earth whereby men can be saved. It's Jesus Christ and that's it. God offered us salvation, the path to change. God is constantly speaking to us, but we have to take time to listen. The Holy Spirit isn't going to have a screaming match with us. We have to stop and say, okay, God, I've yielded myself to you. You see these, these little revivals breaking out all over. I was talking with Dylan Asbury. has been going since last Wednesday. Lee University in Tennessee has been going since Monday. These people have set their agenda aside. 
and said, God, I surrender. I, sur- I don't care if I go to work. I don't care what I do. If I, if I don't go to school, if I miss a class, I am going to meet with you. And that's how we have to be as a church. We have to be willing to set lunch aside. We have to be willing to set our, our, whatever our plans are. Revival, true revival won't come until we surrender our agenda to God. And we, we take his agenda and say, God, I'm willing. Use me. Start with me. We live in a fast-paced microwave, I want it all now world. We rarely take time to consider what God is saying. We treat our prayer life like the value menu at a fast food restaurant. We pull up to church, we give our requests and our needs, and if something is urgent, we're screaming, and we continue on with our, barely, our, with our busy life, barely ever stopping to think and wait for an answer. And then sometimes I've seen it. People are absolutely blown away when they get an answer to their prayer. Help us, God. Help us to take the time to listen to the voice of God. From the time a sheep is born, it learns that the shepherd's voice is the source of life, the source of food, the source of water, shelter, and protection. Jesus is our source of life. No one else. So how can we hear God's voice? How can we know? Where, where, do, we, where do we pick this up? It's by spending time with the Father reading to wor- the word and praying and listening. See, we're not born knowing the voice of God. But we can get to know God by spending time in his word and reading and going over it. Our Monday night, I've been enjoying it because we're, going, we're breaking down the word line by line, word by word. And sometimes I'm like, this is, this is a lot to handle, but I just start writing notes as fast as I can, as fast as Rick is talking. I'm, I'm, I'm writing notes, and I'm putting them in my, in my phone and, and everywhere I can because we need to understand there's coming a day when the Bible may not be available or the version, the, the good version, the true version. They're sanitizing everything we have right now, our history, who we are, our identity, The world is working, Satan is working to break it down. My identity rests in Jesus Christ. Intimacy, intimacy with God, developing personal relationship with Jesus, coming to church is a great start, but that doesn't make you a Christian. A daily walk with God in the Garden of Eden God walked and talked with Adam and Eve in the evenings, in the cool of the day. God desires to communicate with us. He made a way to bring us back to himself. Adam and Eve sinned and created a divide. God came up with a plan to bring us back to himself. He wants to be with us. He wants wants to spend time with us. And are we allowing in our everyday life, are we taking time to spend time with him? David said in Psalms 23, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. He said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you go through and you read this scripture and everybody quotes it and it's on every blanket from here to, you know, wherever. It's, it's, it's well known, but there's something there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, David was a shepherd. He spent some time out in the field. But I, we love to imagine David in, out in the meadow, you know, a sunny day with soft music playing and birds chirping and butterflies floating around. But do you know when David learned that the Lord was his shepherd? It wasn't on the sunny days. It wasn't when things were going great. It was in the dark times. It was in the dark times when the wolf came or when the bear came or when the lion came. And when that happened, that's when he had to learn and he had to know that the Lord was his shepherd. It wasn't the good times all the time. Now, he had some history with God, and he had, he enjoyed the good times. But when he found out there was, there was something to be said about intimacy with God, he knew, he trusted God. Later on in his life, 
the, the, the Israel or the enemy of Israel came and took his, when he was leading an army, he, they took his wife and they took his kids and they took everybody, all his men, and he encouraged himself in the Lord. If he had not spent some time with God Almighty out in that field, he wouldn't have had anything to encourage himself with. He had to encourage. Sometimes we have to encourage ourselves. Say, self, get up. Get up out of bed. You're not going to lay here all the time in misery and, and moaning around and moping around. God is my safety. He's my refuge in a time of trouble. When Satan comes knocking and the enemy is at your door, that's when we have to stand up and say, I know my Redeemer lives. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Number two, we have to recognize who's talking. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. That's all there is to it. Do you know the voice of God? Do you know when God, can you differentiate between the world? The world says, follow your heart. Love is love. God help us. That's, that's not the voice of God. God help us to know you more. The voice of God will never lead us astray. It'll never, ever, 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 ever contradict the Bible. If you think you hear the voice of God, take it to the word. That's the proof. That's the proof. He's never going to tell you to leave your mate. He's never going to tell you any kind of crazy things. I've been in church since I was born, and I've, I've heard some crazy things. Oh, Lord, don't me to do this. I'm like, nope. Nope. That's the importance of knowing the word. Knowing the word. That way it's not, well, let me go look it up. It's knowing thy word have I hid in my heart so I don't sin against you. So that when things come to me and people come to me with a plan and Satan comes to me, I say, ah, ah, that's not right. The Holy Spirit, when it's in there, the Holy Spirit can bring it to your remembrance. If it's empty, God can do it. But I'll leave it there. The nearer you are to God, the clearer his voice will be. Olivia was a baby. We were always working in the church. She'd be in a different room. She was our first baby. That's, bless her heart, we, we learned how to be parents with Olivia. Uh, there would be kids screaming, kids carrying on. And as soon as she started to cry, I couldn't tell any difference. It's a kid crying. But her mom was like, that's Olivia. Right now, that's Olivia. Didn't it? She didn't even have to get a full cry out. And Tina was on it. Tina's like, that's Olivia, I'll be back. But that's how we need to be with Jesus. That's the voice of God. No, I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to touch that unclean thing. I'm not going to do this. Because the Holy Spirit quickens us. But we have to have it down inside. And we have to recognize his voice. Once we learn his voice... We have to listen. That's the, we hear it, but we have to listen. We have to follow the direction. We can hear all we want, but are we following the direction that God's giving? Are we heeding warnings? I grew up a pastor's kid. My parents had a direct connection with the Holy Spirit. I would walk out the door and my mom's like, hey, don't do this. I'm like, how'd you know? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reads your mail. That was my life growing up. The, th the third part of this thing is a nine-letter word, obedience. That's a tough one. Complete obedience. Unquestioning obedience without asking why. I tell my kids, listen, if I say stop, stop immediately. It's a good plan. They don't always follow, but there's been times it saved them. It saved their life. There's, gonna, there's times coming if you haven't faced it when the Holy Spirit says stop right now. You don't know why. Take a different road. Take a different path. Not only in the spiritual realm, but in the, in the physical realm, in the world. You'd be driving down the road, Lord, praying, and God says, hey, I don't know why I stopped in here. Anybody ever had that happen? 
Complete, unquestioning obedience without asking why, realizing that his ways are higher than ours. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad that you don't know everything? God knows. God knows. In 1 Samuel 15, 22, God through the prophet tells Saul to completely destroy all of the Amalekites. Everyone, everything. The animals, the kids, everything. Saul goes on to destroy the majority. He doesn't obey all the way. And because of that, he eventually lost his kingdom. Saul had a, had a rough way to go towards the end of his life. Samuel told him, said obedience is better than sacrifice. And to hearken to follow instruction completely is better than the fat of rams. See, God doesn't want our sacrifice all the time. He would rather have our obedience. He would rather have our unquestioned obedience to his voice and to his commands. One time, well, I like to, I like to garden. And every summer when I lived in Michigan, I would, you know, go out and I'd buy some pepper plants and some squash plants and carrots. And one time, uh, right before we moved to Kentucky, um, I'm like, I'm going to turn my whole backyard, which the kids had destroyed anyways. So I had them, <laughs> I turned it into a garden. I had corn. I had everything you can think of. And I went out and I said, okay, I've never grown potatoes before, but I'm going to grow these potatoes. And I'm going to grow them in rows and I... I tilled the soil up, and I, I did all this work. I read the instructions, and I said, you know, this is how you do it. You fertilize, they're heavy feeders, and this, that, and the other. And then it said something. It said, you space them. Space them about 10 inches apart. I said, okay. And in all my wisdom, I decided that about five inches apart was better because I was the one planting them, right? It was my garden. Nobody was going to tell me what to do, so I planted this garden. I had this beautiful, I mean, I had corn that was eight feet tall, and I had everything going on, and I thought, I'd go out there, and we'd, we ate fresh from our garden. It was wonderful. And then harvest day came. Harvest time came for these potatoes, and they started drying up, and they looked good. I fertilized them, and I had a real nice garden in this side. But harvest day came. When I started pulling up those plants, expecting the bottoms to look as good as the tops, there was a problem. See, I hadn't followed directions. And so instead of having potatoes that were this big, I had potatoes <laughs> that were this big. And I thought, well, immediately I blamed somebody else. Immediately, I blamed somebody else. I said, well, that's, that's just the way, you know, maybe they were just bad potatoes. But then God's like, hey, listen to this. You didn't follow the directions. How can we expect a great harvest without following the directions, without following the voice of the Lord? Apply that spiritually. How can we expect others to win souls, to be successful in ministry without following directions. God help us. God help us. Because at harvest time, when it's all said and done, when it's too late to replant, the winter is coming. God don't help me have small potatoes. God don't help, help me not to have small potatoes. God, I want to harvest. I want to work for you. And I don't want to do it in vain. I didn't follow the directions. We have to have. We have to know the voice of God. We have to have a relationship with the good shepherd. We have to learn to distinguish his voice from all the rest of the distractions in the world. And we have to obey his voice. That still, small voice 
We have to learn to listen to the voice of God. The most important thing about following somebody is to pay attention to where the leader's going. It's just a simple, it's just simple. I can't follow you unless I see and pay attention to where you're going. That's how it is with God. He's there with us. And God provided a way of escape from sin. But we have to learn to listen to the voice of God. Let's stand. Singers and musicians, if you would come. All that matters when the last words are spoken and the last songs are sung, when you stand before the creator of the world, you'll hear his voice this time and you'll know who, exactly who it is that's talking to you. What will you hear? What will he say to you? Will he say, depart from me? You worker of iniquity, I never knew you. Or will he say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter in. Of all the things that I do in my life, that's most important. To know that God is pleased with me. If I play the piano till I'm 150, if I preach, and in the end, God is not pleased. All of this is nothing. I have nothing. <laughs> Today, I want to give you the opportunity to come to the altars. Maybe just reconnect with God. Maybe to ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior for the first time. God will meet you here. Exactly where you are. But he loves you so much, he's not going to leave you. He won't leave you where you are. He'll say, come on, follow me. God is inviting you to follow him today if you don't know him. Maybe you've grown a little bit cold and a little distant. Now is the time to come back to him. If you have a special need or if you need any kind of healing, prayer team, if you guys could, could make your way down here and be ready. Now is the time. My prayer for this service has been for the Holy Spirit to take over. I couldn't stretch it out any further and I couldn't say anything more. Now it's time between you and the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we yield this time to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Take over. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Thank you, Father. God, you're worthy and you're holy. Hallelujah. We have to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. Before you go, spend some time in fellowship. There's some flowers that are available out in the front. sense of something that I see. God, you give the increase. Father, be with us throughout the week and bring us back next week. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.